Hi, my name is Macaulay, and today I'm going to be talking to you about man-in-the-middle attacks. So first of all, what are man-in-the-middle attacks? Well, man-in-the-middle attacks, otherwise known as eavesdropping attacks, are when an attacker comes in between two parties of communication. So the attacker hijacks a session between a client and a host. So your computer and a Wi-Fi network, your computer and a website. Now, often these man in the middle attacks happen when we are accessing unsecure websites or unsecure Wi-Fi networks. So this may be a public Wi-Fi network that's vulnerable to attack, like a Wi-Fi network at a coffee shop or the library. When a man in the middle attack happens, hackers are able to, like I said, get in between these two parties of communication and redirect the information that's being passed back and forth through themselves. So they're able to access and see any sort of data being transferred back and forth between your computer and, you know, the Wi-Fi network you're connected to. That means that they can see what you're doing and the information you're sharing, leaving your data vulnerable for them to take. Now, like I said, man in the middle attacks happen in a few places. They may happen when you're visiting an unsafe website. So the website doesn't have the proper safety protocols and therefore your connection to it is incredibly vulnerable. Uh, it can also happen when you're using an unsecure Wi-Fi network. So again, same thing. This is not a password protected network. Uh, it doesn't have the proper encryption or safety measures set up. And when you connect to it, you're leaving that connection wide open for someone to intercept. Now, this could also be due to outdated software. So if your device hasn't had a software update in a really long time, that may mean that you have a lot of vulnerabilities in your software, making it easier for people to take advantage of that and again, hijack your connection to any given website or network. Now, to give you a visual of what this sort of looks like, so here is your computer and it is connecting to the internet. So you have that original connection. And what happens is when this connection is vulnerable, a man in the middle attack can occur. So a hacker will redirect to a new connection. So rather than your computer connecting directly to say the internet, it is directing through this man in the middle. And this man in the middle is able to see all communications going back and forth. So what happens during a man in the middle attack? So when a man in the middle attack happens, a hacker secretly intercepts the data being exchanged between two devices. Now this lets them see, steal, or even modify sensitive information like passwords, credit card details, and private messages. And this allows hackers to gain access to data being transmitted at the moment and potentially gain access to data stored on the devices involved. So potentially not just the data that you're sharing in that moment, but any data that you have on your device. So one way you can keep yourself safe from man in the middle attacks is to always keep your software up to date. If you're unsure about how to keep your software up to date on any given device, I would suggest going to YouTube and searching how to update my software and then the name of your device. That's a pretty easy way to find it. Uh, but generally you'll find any software updates located in your device's settings. Head over to your settings. And if there's an option to search through your settings, you can search for software updates and take a look to see if you have any updates available. If there are updates available, make sure that you're always downloading them as soon as you can. That's because any software update you get usually has some sort of safety component to it, right? It is patching up vulnerabilities that may exist in your system. You want to avoid public Wi-Fi networks. This doesn't mean that you can't use them altogether, but you want to avoid them. And when you're using them, make sure you're not sharing any sort of sensitive data or information. Don't be doing online banking on a public Wi-Fi network. And if you have to use a public Wi-Fi network, make sure you're employing a VPN, otherwise known as a virtual private network. Now, We'll talk a bit more about virtual private networks in a second, how to download them and how to use them. So stay tuned. How can you protect yourself? All right, set strong router login credentials. So your at home internet, make sure that the password you set on that internet is strong. If you are still using the default router password, please change that password to something unique. Always avoid unsecure websites. So if you're browsing online and you go to a website, make sure that you're checking out if that website is secure. 
Oftentimes on modern web browsers, you'll automatically be told or redirected if a website is unsafe, but just for good measure, always be checking if a website is secure. You can do this by looking at the URL bar and checking to see if there's a little lock or a little warning symbol. You can see the difference here. Also seeing if it has the correct safety protocol. So if it has that HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash ahead of the URL, that means it has a proper safety protocol in place. And watch out for it just being HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. Very subtle difference, but doesn't provide the same protection. All right, so let's quickly look at how to use a VPN. Now VPNs can be downloaded from the App Store, Google Play Store, or Microsoft Store. I'm gonna show you today how to use the VPN that I tend to use, which is Hotspot Shield. There's a free version of it, that's why I like it. Um, so I'm gonna show you just how I open it and turn it on. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to use Hotspot Shield. So here I have it on my desktop. So right away I open it up. Uh, and this is what it looks like at its most basic. It's just a, a window with a big power button in it. Uh, when I open it up, it will choose a automatic location for me to connect to. I can change that location by clicking down where it says virtual location and changing to different spots. Uh, but if I'm happy with that, all I'm going to do to turn on my VPN is just press this power button. And once I do, I'll give it a second to connect and then it's connected. And you can see that I'm connected to my virtual private network. I can see all the details of my connection and I'm ready to go. And if I wanna turn it off, all I have to do is press that sort of stop button at the bottom and it's as easy as that. Now, like I said, I showed you Hotspot Shield. That's the one I like to use, but there are tons of other VPNs. So if you wanna try another one, do some research, Google, what VPN might be best for you. Here are a bunch that are options. Uh, additionally, if you already have some sort of antivirus software, you may already have access to a VPN. Or even if you have a password manager, that may also allow you access to uh, some sort of VPN. So if you have those, check to see if you have free access to a VPN service. All right, I hope you found this session helpful. If you do have any more questions about this topic, you can always call Cyber Seniors toll free at 844 217-3057 or visit us online at www.cyberseniors.org. And until next time, be well and stay safe.